If you have been studying architecture for a little bit of time, you would probably know that you need to go back and update your portfolio constantly. So today I will be bringing you guys along with me as I am updating my portfolio. Now I'm really only adding one project from my first semester at UPenn, but I just thought I would bring you guys along, kind of talk through what I am thinking about updating with, and then hopefully you can kind of see how my portfolio actually works and the guidelines that I already established just to make sure that my portfolio stays very consistent and cohesive and also relates to my resume. A couple of weeks ago, I did release how to make a resume guide and you notice from that video, my resume and my portfolio actually go hand in hand together. So I just want to make sure that how I am presenting myself, my personal brand, I suppose, is very consistent and it looks very nice and designed. And the purpose for this portfolio is to seize some upcoming internship opportunities this summer. I know summer of 2020, there really weren't that many internship opportunities and unfortunately I was on unemployment like so many other Americans because of the pandemic, but fingers crossed for 2021 that I do get my dream internship. <laughs> so today I will just be showing you some InDesign tips and tricks. <laughs> girl Nat here. If you are new to the channel, my name is Natalie. I'm the creator behind Unraveling Architecture. I love breaking down our built environment, but also helping architecture students like yourself survive and thrive in architecture school. And portfolios are so important. They're so important because it's just how you present all of the hard work that you produced throughout your time in architecture school. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump downstairs to my computer and and I will show you how I update my portfolio. Because I am adding in an entirely new project that I made during my first semester at UPenn, I did actually have to completely eliminate one project from my portfolio. So. This High Street Elementary School project is the project that I actually disliked the most in my entire portfolio, but I first wanted to make sure that that was in fact the project to remove. Now I do want to apologize, my screen record, and I didn't realize this at the time, does not show all the windows and pop-ups that I have open in my InDesign, but you can see all of the guidelines that I have in my InDesign file. I typically set this up on the a master pages. I recommend for everyone to do this just to ensure that you have a nice established gridded system that you can follow. Also keep in mind when you do update a portfolio, please update the table of contents or index whatever you have in your portfolio just to make sure everything is consistent. The first thing I do is duplicate a bunch of spreads, that way everything follows the exact same format when you are flipping through a portfolio very quickly, especially digitally. You don't want your text to move, meaning that the text isn't in the exact same location across your multiple spreads. So I duplicated my La Brea Tar Pits project, but I'm putting in the flow project, updating the description, my instructor, the year all that good stuff. Now I was having an issue trying to limit the amount of text I included in the description. It is really good to include a good description, but chances are not a lot of people are going to read it. So editing this down is always encouraged. And you can even see that I did break the grid here. If you see that lower blue line, I need to fix that. Also picking a good cover image, always a struggle, but you definitely want to pick an image that shows the overall quality of your project and not just a detail drawing. Also, I would encourage anyone to include a bunch of captions. This is a great way to add callouts to details that I'm sure was overlooked when you first initially flipped through a portfolio. So definitely don't overlook the power of captions. So this spread, as we get more into it, you are going to notice caused me a lot of issues. I had a lot of creative decisions to decide with this two-page spread here. I have a Schwazi-inspired drawing, which 
which I absolutely love, which basically combines two sections and a plan all in one drawing. And you will see how I resolve this spread as we continue working through this portfolio. This render, which shows the transitional quality between the brick to the modern translucent concrete was critical to my project, so it is important that I do add this. If you notice through these time lapses, I'm constantly going back and making sure that this spread still relates to other spreads. I do hope that all of these time lapses really just show you that designing a portfolio takes so many tries and fails here and there regarding spreads and how it looks. Is it cohesive? Does it work? So going back and forth, constantly editing everything, editing the words, the captions, the images is strongly encouraged. I will say this again though, maintaining a strict grid is essential to your portfolio success. And I was having this internal struggle that you can see in this time lapse, trying to maintain this grid, but also try to make the spread look very, very beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. All of my renders and images kind of had the same tone to it that I added and edited in Photoshop. So even as you are rendering out everything, try and keep a cohesive, similar color palette. It will save you time later on. Now this facade placement was one of the most successful parts of my review that was constantly referenced. However, unfortunately, I could not find a place that was best for it. I was debating shrinking down the Choisy drawing, trying to scale it up, all that good stuff. But I finally found something, so just keep on watching if you're curious about what I did. I do also want to call out, I am not putting all the plans on the same page. I mean, I only have one, but I'm not putting all the drawings on one page. I could have the elevation drawing, the section, and the plan all in one thing, but I try to incorporate plans, section perspective, the interior render. So it's multiple components of my building that when read together, tell a very important story to my whole project. So this is the last spread for my flow project. I decided to do a two page image. I actually really like this render. Here you can see I re-centered the Choisy drawing because I did like the Choisy drawing by itself. I think it's very clean and just nice by itself. So this was the best workaround I discovered as I was working through everything. Also, please consider that caption placement should almost be looked like as blocks because they are visually heavy. You can just see that when I zoom out. So good caption placement is a part of a portfolio design. So as always, I upload my portfolios on Issue. I recommend this, it's free. And here is just the final layout I landed on. Everything is subject to change, obviously, and I think towards the end, my miscellaneous project also has to be updated. Overall, I do personally love portfolio designs. I think it is a great way for an architect to express themselves and also show the kind of work and high quality work that you put out there. Another recommendation I do have for architecture students though is to go back to your very beginning projects. Chances are they aren't going to be as good as your current skill level, so go back, update it, remodel, and you'll be okay. that's it for today's video. I do hope that this was helpful for you guys. If you wouldn't mind leaving me a like and subscribing to this channel, it does help me out and I am here to help you guys. We have a Discord, Patreon, all that good stuff, so please do whatever you feel comfortable with and I would greatly appreciate it. So that's really all the time we have for today. I hope you guys learned something new. Leave me a comment down below if you did or if you have any other portfolio videos requests. I know portfolios are just so scary honestly as well. That is it for today's video and I will see you next time. Love you guys.